Hey guys, Brian Jodas here with Pick Up the Six. It's Holy Week, and for my Christian brothers and sisters, this week marks the culmination of our faith, the days in which Jesus Christ died and rose again. One year ago, we released a pair of Pick Up the Six episodes, one with Catholic priest and Air Force chaplain James Hamill, and the other with my friends Rob Renzi and Dom Rosso, a former Navy SEAL. Our conversations centered around a man thrust into the story as Christ took his final steps. That man's name was Simon, and he in that moment had to pick up the six and help Jesus carry the weight of that cross. Here are both of those conversations. God bless, happy Holy Week, and have a happy Easter. As they were marching out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. That is from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. I'm Brian Jodis, and this is Pick Up the Six podcast, and today we bring you in for the first of a two-part series as we unpack the story of Simon of Cyrene, a man who in a moment's notice was thrust into helping another man who had been beaten and was on the path to his eventual death. This is Holy Thursday today in the Christian faith, and we're leaning in with Father James Hamill, a family friend, Catholic priest, and colonel in the United States Air Force. This is a powerful story about picking up the six, and I hope you enjoy it. Father Hamill, this is a blessing, uh, and it is with gratitude I welcome you to pick up the six podcast. How are you? Good to see you, Brian. Good. I'm so excited to do this and what we're starting as a two-part series here on these days with real intentionality. And our listeners know that uh, we share stories about picking up the six, and in doing so, I wear my faith on my sleeve when we do that. And was having just real prayer, prayerful thought. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've wanted to do this one for a while, and, and and God made it happen. The stars aligned, God interceded, and, we, and we're doing it in the way in which we're going to do a two-part series. We're going to talk to you today about the biblical text, the meaning behind that story of Simon, and then tomorrow, we're going to introduce you guys to Rob Renzi and Dom Rosso, who Rob, a, a dear friend, his brother Ronnie, one of my best friends, uh, but I've known him for a long time, and Rob is an actor who is portraying the role of Jesus Christ in an upcoming film about Eucharistic miracles. And he mm. called on his friend Dom in a moment's <laughs> notice. The irony of it is incredible. They were in need. They're getting ready to film this scene, right? They're filming all this live action about Jesus's last moments. And they have a Simon, and... He has to bail, and they have to call on this guy, Dom Rosso, to come help out. So we're going to share that entire story with you tomorrow. You and I will talk more about it. But I thought, what what better way to kick it off than with a family friend, a priest who has known my father for years. Uh, we've sat together at the table, um, and to have you come on. He's a Jersey guy, too, and, and Father James Hamill. So I'm, I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled to do it. That was I talked way too much. I'm sorry, but I just, I'm so excited to do this today. Good, good. Well, Let's here's get into what, it. Let's get into it. Before we talk about this incredibly pivotal story, and look, it, it's a moment in a much larger story, but for what we do here, men and women who have gone above and beyond to pick up the six through service, purpose, and impact. Well, that guy, this guy that we don't know much about sort of checks all the, those boxes. But you heard me say in the intro, family friend, Catholic priest, colonel in the United States Air Force. So a Catholic priest chaplain. So how's that happen, James Hamill from New Jersey? Well, um, <clears throat> thanks, Brian. Sure. Uh, I've been a parish priest in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, where your dad and yeah. mom are from, uh, and was a parish priest for eight years um, in North Jersey. And just something inside of me was looking for something a little bit different, a little bit more, perhaps. I, I, uh, I'm not a military brat like you, but I did grow, I'm a corporate brat, and and my father moved us around the world. Um, I was born in New Jersey. Then we moved to Miami, Florida. And from there, for two years in Miami, we moved to Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and then after two years in Japan, almost eight years in Hong Kong. Wow. And, uh, and then back to New Jersey. Uh, so I knew there was a bigger world out there. And um, something about that experience, I think, in my growing up years, <clears throat> attracted me to 
to the life of a, a military chaplain. So in 2000, uh, I first, in 1999, I got the permission of my archbishop to come into the, uh, to the Air Force. And then in 2000, I did just that. So um, quite a culture shock from being a civilian priest yeah. to being a military man, a military chaplain. Um, and I joined, of course, before 9-11 happened. So I, I was joining what I thought was a peacetime Air Force, uh, and all that changed about 14, 15 months later after I, after I came in. So I don't want to give a lot of sob stories or war sure. stories about that, other than to say, you know, 9-11 changed all of our lives, yeah. especially those of us in the military. Um, I deployed right away. I've had four combat deployments um, to Qatar, uh, Kuwait, Iraq, and Afghanistan, in, in that order. Um, and along the way, I've um, seen my share of the downside of life and war and military life, and I've also met a lot of great people. Uh, your parents being uh, at the top of that list of uh, uh, just get to meet great patriotic, faithful people all the time. Quick story. Uh, <coughs> when I was deployed, <coughs> excuse me, fighting a little bit of a cold here. When I deployed to um, Afghanistan, I got a, uh, whoop, I got a message on my computer. Uh, I got a, uh, it's not email. the big, it's uh, not the, which big fella is it? <laughs> the divine intervention? Is I, it? <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a, I got a message from your father whom I had not met yet. Yeah. And, it, it was very kind. He he didn't know me. He hadn't met me yet either. He just said, "Hey, Father, I just want you to know this is." Uh, he was a two star at the time. Uh, this is General Jodis. Uh, when you get back from Afghanistan, I want you to know uh, Judy and I will be uh, your parishioners, and uh, we'd like to lecture and be uh, help with the Eucharist, and uh, and we're praying for you. And I just thought wow. I'd never had a leader like that um, reach deep back into. Um, you know, Afghanistan uh, to, he had to find out what my name was, what my email was, and 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 just let me know that he was praying for me and he couldn't wait to meet me in person. So that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going in the military because uh, thankfully, you're, although your dad is unique, he's not alone mm. in, in the kind of uh, selfless service and people who are proud to serve their country, proud of their faith, and wear both of them on their sleeves, if you will. Yeah. Not being then, obnoxious. Then he sees New Jersey on the resume yeah. and he's like, oh, I got to get with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. When did you, when did you know, when were you called to become a priest? You're ordained in 1992. So you've got some time there between that and then going yeah. into the military service. And before we talk about this incredible story, Simon, I am interested to know just what the life of an Air Force chaplain is like, but what did, was there a moment, right, where James Hamill is, is okay, God, let's go do this? I mean, how's that <laughs> happen for you? Well, I, I, I would say it was kind of, um, in some ways, a process of elimination. As I was a kid growing up, beginning to think about what do I want to do? Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I, I started to say, well, I don't want to do this. Okay. I don't want to do that. Um, uh, I wasn't qualified to do a lot of things. Uh, intellectually, I would say, uh, the focus that it takes in school to be good in chemistry, like say to be a doctor, uh, it's just, some of these things are just beyond me. Some of these things just didn't interest me. Um, and at the same time, you know, growing up as a Catholic family that practiced the faith regularly, we were always friendly with our local parish priest. Sure. So we sure. were not strangers at our house. We would, uh, uh, from time to time, have them over for dinner. And I just was blessed and lucky, mm. even overseas, living in Hong Kong, to have such good um, role models in parish priests and missionaries in Hong Kong. And it just, and I thought, could I do that? That looks interesting. That looks uh fulfilling of course fulfilling, I yeah. it's not just about it's not just about 
what seems cool, you have to put a lot of prayer into it as well, because a lot of things are cool, but they're not right for you. Right. So, um, so with prayer and discernment, um, slowly, by the time I was getting to my late, uh, like senior year of high school, I was like, well, I, you know, the idea of becoming a priest was still not the idea. The reality of becoming a priest was still years away. But I said, let, let me think about it. Let me try it. So I went into an undergraduate seminary program at Seton Hall. And um, I did my four years undergraduate at Seton Hall. And I followed on uh, right away to the graduate seminary, also at Seton Hall. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, next thing I know, boom. Eight years have gone by, and I'm ordained, and I'm like, whoa. Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> what just happened? Slow down. Right. <laughs> you want to pump the brakes a little bit, but at that point, uh, you also don't want to pump the brakes. Sure. You want to get Let's pumping. Go. And you, yeah. Uh, so so I will say, um, you know, I, I for the sake of time, we don't have unlimited time. Um, um, I, I had priestly role models. I had parents who who um, who were great witnesses to the faith in their life and in the way they raised us, um, and um, <clears throat> it hasn't always been uh, easy and it hasn't always been fun. But I believe I am where God wants me to be, mm. including being a military chaplain. Sure, you talked so, about growing up with those faithful parents and role models that display it. It's, the, you know, one of the greatest blessings of my life is similar situation. However, as a young fifth grade boy, having those kind of parents that invite the nuns from the Catholic school over to dinner, boy, you know, a little conflict of interest there when Sister Mary Ruth's. I can see the beads the of sweat <laughs> starting on you right now. Like, Ma, Ma, I mean, Sister Mary Ruth is busting my butt enough as it is at school. She's coming into the house now. Like, give me a break. Keep the torture going. <laughs> oh, man, I love Sister Mary Ruth. She was from Pittsburgh, man. She was my fourth grade teacher. She was tough, man. Wow. She was tough. Good, but she was good. good. Yeah, man, you remember that stuff, and that's great. Okay, last one. Life as an Air Force chaplain. I mean, you're in, you you go into the military, wow, right? Yeah. Left of 9-11, then the world on that Tuesday morning changes forever. And forever. you are thrust into what would be very different assignments than had you been if that wouldn't have happened, I assume. So Absolutely. life as an Air Force chaplain, what's that like? Well, it's um, <clears throat> it's like <laughs> it's like being in the military. Well, it is in the I am in the military, so right. it's um, <clears throat> you know, this what well, officer training we had to do that. There's a lot yeah. of yelling. A lot well, of you go through seminary, but then you go through officer training school. Like, yeah, you just, yeah, you just love yeah. going through programs, huh? There's a lot to go through. Um, of course, in the military, chaplains are non-combatants. So um, I, I, I like to tell people, and I know you have a lot of military folks who yeah. are, uh, look at uh, and listen to your podcast and watch your videos and who uh, support your uh, Picking Up the Six um, program. Um, uh, they send us into war, only they don't give us a gun, yeah. chaplain. Yeah. Right. So we do have people that that are uh, armed and who are combatants that that accompany us to war. But um, <clears throat> uh, and again, but they don't they also don't have us in a foxhole uh, shooting at the enemy. You know, we we, uh, right. we tend to be tend to be. A little bit rear echelon, though, not always. Mm -hmm. And I and that's true in, in my case and in many other chaplains cases as well. Uh, we're not out on foot patrols. We're not, uh, generally speaking, jumping out of airplanes, although some do. Uh, we're not flying airplanes and dropping bombs on people. We are we are taking care of the warfighter support unit when they come back to That's the right. base. That's right. Uh, when they're in the uh, mobile hospitals, when they are um, in between missions, when they're training. When they're separated from their families. Yeah, I was going to say, when they're when missing they're, their families, when they're facing all the life throws at them, yeah. and they need someone to talk to. When they need somebody to talk to, when they've, when they've just lost a buddy, 
Yeah. Uh, when they may have just lost a buddy because of something they failed to do. Mm. I, I'll never, well, I won't get into that story, but, but, but just to say there's so many moral complexities in yeah. war and around war. <clears throat> um, and uh, it is absolutely the right place for a chaplain to be. Um, some people think that, well, what are you doing? You're supposed to represent God. And what are you doing in, in, in such unholy places? And, and that's precisely where we need to be. That's where he needs to be. Yeah, that's yeah. where he needs to be. Uh, I, I don't say this in jest. I mean this with all the sincerity of my heart. They don't send you into those places with munitions and guns, yet Ephesians 6 tells you what you need to go in with. You put on the full armor of God. Right. As That's Catholic right. guys, you probably throw a rosary in your pocket too. And if you've got that Absolutely. weapon, you'll hold the mother with you. Yeah. We're good to go. I Believe mean, me, I've been downrange. Plenty of non Catholics throw some rosaries in their pockets too. Because no atheists in a foxhole. There's no atheists in a foxhole, Padre. There's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, you're right. So, you know, the first few times you live through a rocket attack, um, the first few times you're, I survived my the helicopter I was riding in getting shot at. Um, you, I developed some sort of like you, you just suppress those fears. You have to trust God. You yep. say I can't. I'm going to be here for six months. I cannot live every day in fear. People need me to be strong. And if I am showing a lack of faith in God's providence and in lack of faith in God's care for me, how are the war fighters going to feel who are going outside the wire every day mm -hmm. facing the enemy? So um, I, I will admit that those first rocket attack or two scared scared me a lot. Uh, the first time I um, climbed into a Blackhawk and we had to do some... Uh, um, you know, diversionary tactics and avoid some ground fire. Uh, they were scary, but mm. by the end, um, I, I, what was that movie? I, I can't remember. Uh, um, was it the Joker? The Joker, that famous scene, uh, the, the actor who played the Joker, mm -hmm. uh, the Australian guy who died. A number yeah, of years Heath Ledger. Ago. Heath Ledger in the Batman Heath movie. Ledger, right. that famous scene yep. where he's walking away and yeah. this giant explosion. Yeah, he's That's dressed as a nurse. Yeah, he's yeah, sure. At the yeah. end of the day, yeah. you're, things, bombs are going off around you and you're just like, well, yeah. if it's my time, it's my time. But I'm yeah. not going to panic about it. So... What a um, tragic story. The incredible actor. He, I mean, boy, immersed himself in that. He moment. was. I, but I will say, when you get home, mm -hmm. that's when you start to realize the real danger you were in. Yeah. So if, if you have folks uh, who, who have been in a lot more danger than I have, um, who have ever experienced um, combat stress reaction uh, or post-traumatic stress reaction, um, it's a real thing. Yeah. And I can tell you, I don't have PTSD, but I sure, I sure did have a reaction mm -hmm. when I came back from combat. Um, and a lot of the stuff that one suppresses in the war zone kind of bubbles up when you get home. Yeah. That's why we've been so fortunate to share stories from folks like Reboot Recovery, Warrior's Heart. Um, just man, all the different group. We've, we've done a lot of conversations, right? Even my friend, Chris O'Toole, who uh, was a, was a mass grave. Uh, his job in the army was to go find those mass graves, right? Recover those things. I mean, that guy carries a lot, carried a lot home with him. Uh, yeah. Incredible, but mission driven, picking up the six, the entire way. All right. So let's, let's talk about this story, right? So let's get into our story here today as we sit on Holy right. Thursday, and then we're going to introduce yep. you to Rob and Dom tomorrow for full disclosure, I've already recorded the conversation with Rob and Dom and Father. I can't wait for you to hear it and for this audience to hear it tomorrow. The bond that these two men now share, having brought that scene to life, yeah. they'll be bonded for life. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the genesis of their coming together for that. But but basically, we've got four Gospels, right? In the Bible, there's four yeah. Gospels, right? Four disciples that write these books about all the stuff that happens in Jesus's life and his missionality, right? 
But in only right. three of them is this character of Simon mentioned, right? Mark, right. Matthew, and Luke. John right. doesn't make any mention of it. And we read that very quick sentence, right? And in all three of them, it's basically a sentence. This man was, and I like the word compelled, compelled to carry the cross. In one of those three, it mentions two names. He's the father of Alexander and Rufus. And as far as biblical text, as far as I know, now we brought a professional in, yeah. that's about all we know. Yeah. Right? So, so what do we know about this guy? T tell us from what you know, well, the story of this Simon I, of Cyrene. I think I've been doing some reading because, as you say, uh, as Simon of Cyrene is only mentioned uh, in one sentence in in uh, in the Bible, in the in the Gospels, anyway. What we call the Synoptic Gospels; those are the three that you mentioned: Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, Synoptic meaning they they have a similar look; they have a similar right. perspective. And John is a slightly different. Uh, way of telling the story of jesus as uh, well john so, kind of should be given his relationship and just yes, right i mean just that yes. makes sense right the more you unpack yes. about john and know about him he's the one who stands at the foot of the he's the only one left of the group that's there at the foot of the cross yeah. right after everything goes down he's the one who's with mary right basically becomes mary's son after jesus and is and, and is the last gospel written and so had more time right to think about right um, what did this person, Jesus, mean to us? Who was he? Like I was saying uh, uh, before, you know, you can think about what's happening to you in a war zone uh, at the time, but your thoughts aren't very clear because yeah. so much is going on. When you get home, you have time to think about it more and layers of meaning come on. And so John's gospel is also very uh, um, laden with, um symbolic uh meaning but yes. but um yeah. so simon um yeah he was compelled by the romans to help jesus carry <coughs> his cross um and you know our faith we don't call he's not saint simon of cyrene he's not a saint in the church right what else did he do uh, he, he where did he what even, was he doing uh, there jewish Right. He, he, Cyrene is, is in modern day Eastern uh, Libya. And but so if he was in Jerusalem, that's that's I looked it up this morning. I didn't happen to know this. Right. But it's 70, 750 miles basically from Cyrene to Jerusalem. Yeah. So he was a wanderer. He was a traveler. He was in Jerusalem for a reason. Maybe he was a merchant. Maybe he was there on business. He wasn't there to pray. He wasn't praying at the uh, temple. But he's compelled to help Jesus carry his cross. And he wasn't a believer. And yet he did it anyway. And I think there are so many lessons in life um, um, about doing something anyway, even if you don't feel like it. Mm. I know you do a lot of physical activity you do a lot of running hence the name of your group as well um someone who's training for a marathon <clears throat> runs a lot even when they don't feel like it in 19 week program you're not always going to be geared up to go for a that's run. that's right that's right even something as simple as going to work every day mm -hmm. don't always feel like going to work every day but you do it um you do it because you're supposed to you do it because it's the right thing to do. You do it because you may have mouths to feed. You have people who depend on you. And um, there's, I think that's why Simon is so popular. Um, if you've ever get a chance to go to the Holy Land, have you been? No, have to, though. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, have to. So. You can walk the Stations of the Cross in Jerusalem or the the uh, Via Dolorosa, the, the Way of Sorrows. And it's like the Stations of the Cross in church. There's 14 stations, and <laughs> you end up at the tomb of the Holy Sepulchre where Jesus was buried. And you make your pilgrimage. You can say the rosary. You could do the Stations of the Cross. But at the fifth station, uh, even in Jerusalem, is um, the Church of Simon of Cyrene. It's a little chapel, a little Franciscan chapel where you can go in. It's not the Church of St. Simon of Cyrene. 
right. uh, the apostle, just right. the chapel of Simon of Cyrene. That's got to be pretty rare, right? Pretty rare to have a chapel named after someone who is not a saint, possibly not even a believer. Yeah. Is he mentioned anywhere else other than in those three Gospels? I don't believe so. And we know that his his sons are mentioned in one of Paul's letters as well. Right. And I think that from some of the reading I did, it 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 appears that Simon himself was not a believer, but his sons were. But his sons were, yeah. And and that's why Simon is intentionally mentioned because yeah. the early Christian community uh would have known who Alexander and Rufus were. Gotcha. And they wanted to connect that th their authenticity as disciples of Christ through their father who helped Jesus carry the cross. Mm. So um, you think about Christian discipleship or, or any kind of discipleship, but uh, so Simon was not a believer or as far as we know. And well, at, least, does, at least maybe and, not until that moment, I wonder. Right. I wonder. He does this thing. You think about, um, just to name one, there are, there are hundreds of charities. Think about Mother Teresa's sisters. They don't ask the people who they're helping. Are you Catholic? Uh, uh, they may be non-believers, or they may be, certainly where she started out in Calcutta, uh, they may be Hindus. Mm -hmm. She didn't require sameness of faith for her and her sisters to do a good thing. Um, another thought I had about that. In, in, some, in some strains or, or streams of Christianity, <laughs> faith, um, you can tell off, faith has authenticity when it feels right. If you feel highly emotional about your prayer, if you feel close to God, if you feel forgiven, if you feel saved, that's a sign of its authenticity. And then there's a strain in Eastern spirituality, Eastern Christian spirituality, Orthodox Church and Eastern Catholicism, where it's not in the feeling of the thing. It's in the doing of the thing. So even if you don't feel like going to Mass, you went to Mass. You get the benefits of being at Mass, even if it didn't lift your spirit, mm -hmm. even if you didn't walk out of church on a high. Uh, same thing as feeding the poor, uh, helping somebody carry their cross, even if you didn't want to do it. The fact that you did it is where the grace lies you know it's incredible when you think about sort of the moment so he, he's kind of a somewhat nameless character he's sort of there by happenstance he's not seeking jesus out he's not been no. following this man around for the last three years he's no disciple he's kind of just there and and quite frankly most seem to believe he probably wanted nothing to do with this it's not right. like he was like i'll do it Right. Like, yeah, yeah. let me help. This he didn't man. volunteer. No, compelled. They compelled him, which means they had to convince him to do it. Right. Um, so I think about a few things. I think about that. Right. And then I just think about the incredible meaning of it and how obviously the creator orchestrates all of this to happen for a reason. Let me take my son in this terrible moment. And let me teach an amazing story in that even when you're not expected, even when you might not be the character who we would expect to have to help someone in need, you, listener, are Simon. What moment is waiting for you? Because this guy was just sort of standing around and he gets thrust into something and he has to physically represent a big meaning, which is just be willing to say yes, I guess, when called upon to do something. What was the, who, I forget who said it, but the, uh, 90% of life is showing up. Mm, yeah. Uh, 
that's probably been a sounds like some to, Vince Lombardi might. <laughs> sounds like it, something. It may have. It may have he been. might have. One been. of your one of your followers will will write yeah. in the comment section uh, the correct answer to that quote. But yeah, it's just being there. I think about how many uh, people throughout history, at, at least since the advent of the uh, automobile, have helped. Uh, uh, a woman get to the hospital to give birth to a baby. Mm. That wasn't their intention when they woke up that right. morning right? or flagged down by, or an ambulance or, you know, that's not what they were planning to do that day. And yet what they did helped bring forth life. Yeah. Um, because they were there. Because they, they were didn't there. say no. They didn't say no. And we all have our own crosses. So now we'll get metaphorical. We yeah. all have our own crosses to bear. Jesus physically had to carry that cross up that hill to that final place. Right. But we all have our crosses to bear. But what about those next to us? How can we help our brother or sister carry that, what they have? And this guy didn't even know him yet. He had to, there's just, th th this doesn't happen on accident. This doesn't happen in the sequence of events that it happens on accident. There, there's incredible meaning in why God was had that happen in that moment, I think. Uh, As Jesus said, even before his crucifixion, unless you pick up your cross daily and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Um, and then has someone in that moment pick it up and and, fought and, and go with him. Do the very thing that he, do that the he very thing. challenged us to do, right. who are his disciples. Right. So I think one of the uh, commentators I read also said in, in Simon picking up the cross for Christ and helping him carry it. Um, it shows, it's a symbolic gesture to show uh, the early believers that uh, Jesus was not just for his own. He was for the Gentiles as well. Even, even the non-believers uh, are now part of the christian story the story yeah. of christ yeah so <clears throat> i want to come back to that i can't wait for you guys to hear this story from rob and dom tomorrow father as well yeah because they're going to tell you how dom ends up on this movie set right rob's a huge part rob's been a part of this film from day one and they're and they're filming all these scenes and through the live action father uh they've got to do uh breaking of the bread right they do the last supper they do walking on water. They film, I mean, all these different components that are going to make up this movie, but they get to where they've got to film these final crucifixion scenes and the passion. And they're going to tell you the story about how Dom gets thrust into it. But, and I'll just give this as a teaser. He wasn't the original choice. So yeah. there's, there's really, there's meaning in that. They call on him at the last minute to fill yeah. this role. It's incredible how that happens. And then I also think about, cause I want to think of uh, my next question for you is going to be, what happens to Simon after this? So, so it's not like he was eager chomping at the bit to do this. And I can't wait for you guys to hear Dom, a devout Catholic, former Navy SEAL, yeah. legitimate warrior, right? Yeah. So think about this, former special operator of some of the most elite units, devout Catholic husband and father. We want you to come play Simon. When Jesus falls and he's got to pick up the cross, Dom is ready to sprint up the hill with that thing. Yet he has to act as if he's not. Yeah. And he's got no acting experience. <laughs> and, he, and, and he nails it. So yeah. I can't wait for you guys to hear him talk about that journey. Because think about that, right? Us, right? We would think, please pick me. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. I'll run that thing up the hill for you. I'll take it the whole way up. Yeah. Imagine yeah. having to, he's got to dial that back. But by the end, they basically have to remove him because now he's connected to yeah. it. And that's what I wonder about Simon, right? So I wonder, we don't know. I wonder if in the 100 yards, 200 yards, however far he carries it with him, when they're under that thing together, I do wonder what happens in the heart of that man. Yeah, yeah. Uh or maybe I'm making too big a deal of it. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like chance encounters in life, you know. I wonder where that person is now. I wonder what ever became of. Um, um, 
uh, someone said uh, perhaps heaven is finding out all of those wonderful happenstance relationships yeah. that that helped us grow in life. We get to see that. Now we can show and, it to you. Yeah. And say thank you. Uh, and maybe hell is seeing all the times that we were <laughs> not. We, we were the the reason that somebody else stumbled mm. three times on constant and repeat and you can't escape. Yeah. 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 Um, but I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to dissuade your line of thought, but since, um, um, this is Holy week, um, and for tomorrow's good Friday, uh, it's good for us to picture ourselves as Simon of Cyrene. It's good for us to picture ourselves as Veronica, who wipes the face of Jesus. And, and as, your, as your seal buddy said, I just wanted to sprint up that hill. And I bet he did. But I think especially on Good Friday, we also have to be cognizant of the fact or also see ourselves in the crowd that is yelling, crucify him. Mm. Because that's us too. Mm -hmm. We are Simon. We mm -hmm. are Veronica. We are um, we are the crowd yelling, "Crucify him!" Free Barabbas at times, and and so that's a somber thought, but it's appropriate for Holy Week to think about that. Uh, the very people the week before that were shouting Hosanna to Jesus uh, all abandoned him and are screaming for his blood. Um, do we think? Do I think honestly that I couldn't have been in that crowd if I was alive at that time yeah. and was a religious leader of that day, like I yeah. am a religious leader of this day? Yeah, I I wouldn't want to. I'm glad I was born today. Let's put it that way. That that is. I had not thought about that. I'm yeah. I'm a gung ho guy, right? So I'm thinking yeah. about yeah. Let me be Simon and let me help him, and go. But somebody was Pontius Pilate. Somebody, right. somebody, right? The, all those, you're right, in, the, in that crowd. And I think it's why, maybe it's why when we read the Passion aloud, we, the crowd in the church, have to echo that line. I just thought about that. It, it is. It, it's, a, it's intentional. Um, you know, that, that old spiritual, were you there? Mm -hmm. When they crucified my Lord, uh, yes, we were. Yes, we were. Our spiritual uh, ancestors were there. Our, our, uh, if we could be transported back in time, we were there. Maybe we would be John at the foot of the cross. I'd like to think I would be. Uh, maybe we were like the other disciples who had all scattered. Maybe we were like the angry crowd. Maybe we were, at times, we we're like the repentant thief on the cross next to him. Mm. Lord, let me, uh, you know, who rebuked who rebuked the other uh, thief yeah. for challenging Jesus to get him and us off the cross. If Jesus promised uh, the good thief that this day you will be with me in paradise. So. We have to see ourselves in each of the characters in this week of Holy Week. Um, um, and I remind priests, because we always end up during the Passion reading the, the lines of Christ. Uh, yeah, this is not typecasting. You know, it's appropriate that we read it as we stand in persona Christi mm -hmm. at the altar. But don't think that, that you always get to read the part of Jesus because you're most like him. Right. Sometimes you are. Sometimes you're not. Um, anyway, that's just a thought, but yes, uh, sometimes we are Simon and Cyrene who, who are, who are unwilling conscripts, but who do a great and important thing anyway. And, and, uh, sometimes we are the other disciples who, who weren't even there to help Jesus carry his cross. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we're at the foot of the cross weeping, and that's the that's the uh, that's the what happens in life. We we play all those roles, 
But I'm grateful that that your buddies uh, to pick up the six were able to have a profound spiritual experience while acting. Oh yeah. It just I said like we transport ourselves back to that time. This acting experience transported them spiritually back to that time and in, enlivened in them yeah. something. That, well, you'll, you'll, uh, hear, sure you'll hear them. And I can't wait to hear about it. You'll hear them tomorrow uh, talk about, and because it, it was about a year ago that they filmed it from when we had our conversation for tomorrow, right? So they've got right. some time removed and yet they still talk with the passion and love for that moment because it has changed their lives. And these are two very faithful uh, religious men who kind of leveled up <laughs> to be honest with you. It sounds like they yeah. sort of leveled up and they got to do it together, which is amazing. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that because they're not just characters, right? It's one thing if you take on a fictional character and you say sort of, you know, that you hear actors say that character will be with me. Yeah. Boy, in this case for these two guys, you'll hear their story tomorrow. You'll hear in their voice, the way in which they with gratitude got to depict that. And I think they both really understand the weight of it. And, uh, and I think they're both grateful for it. So you hear them talk about that, which is really neat. And I can't wait. Well, let me ask you a question, Brian, sure. if I may, it's, it's uh, um, have you found yourself as you've gotten older? Um, has your faith meant become to mean more to you than let's say it did. I know you said you were raised by, by yep. wonderful believing yep. parents. And I know that yep. you were, but yep. we each have our own journey. Yep. You find yourself at a point in your life where you're closer to God than you were maybe 20 years ago. We talk about it on tomorrow's show. We actually bring it up because I okay. talked to those. It's funny that you asked, yeah. you know, and I, and I, I think I even specifically cited for the two of them over the last four or five years. Um, and I even texted my dad about this. I, and I texted him and I basically just said, thank you. I've met a lot of people who have gone away from their faith and come back. I've met a lot of people who have been rebaptized later in life. And and I'm I'm so joyful for those people in their journey. But my message to them was kind of like thank you. I never felt like I left. However, the depth in which my ability to understand and articulate and be actively engaged in that faith I mean it, it it's so yeah. much deeper now. And I credit that to a few things. Obviously, the intercession of the Holy Spirit, number one. Um, being around other people, specifically in the space I'm in through F3, and this is not an F3 podcast, but we talk about it a lot, around other men of faith who are who are accelerating, Catholics, Protestants, even J my Jewish friends, right? Even have an iftar dinner with my Islamic friend. Being around more of that, but specifically in the Christian faith, being around more men who articulate it and just taking that in. So, so yes, and it's a long way of saying yes. And then if you want to get faster, run with faster people. If you want to get stronger, work out with heavier weight. If you want to get deeper in your faith, be around other people mm -hmm. who, who are deepening that. So yes. And by doing things like this, it only helps. And my hope is that, and I'm, I want to say this to our audience and I rarely just talk to them guys. I am so grateful for you taking the time these two days, those of you that are listening to these two episodes and leaning in on this with us, because it means so much to me. I know it means a ton to father Hamill. It means a ton to Rob and Dom for you guys to be a part of it. And our hope is that you just take something from these two days, whether you're yeah. uh super religious or not, there is an incredible story in this book of this no name person who is thrust into an amazing moment um, and with intentionality. So that's a long way of saying yes. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. And, and you know what and, else has helped too? But, we have, a, we have an 11 year old, we have a seven year old, right? My, when, uh, my, my 11 year old who in the second grade received first communion, it was like, it was like kindling on the fire of our family's faith. So now we're walking through as Catholics. I was going to ask you if, if right? becoming a parent changed your faith. Of life. Oh, well, of course, right. Like, I mean, the day you get married, I think changes your faith. If you do it the way in which we did. And I, boy, I've been yeah. leaning on this because I watched a video this week and this year, something hit me. Good. When Good. you get married, we got married in a Catholic church and whether you're married in a church, wherever it is, 
When you say I do, you actually say I die. So that's a pretty big step, right? I, I right. die to you, other person. Now we're joined side by side. Eve comes from Adam's side, not from his head to lord over him, not from his feet to be below him, from his side to be mm -hmm. at his side, right? She is his equal and fulfills his life. So that's a big moment, right? Then you create life with, God creates life with these two people together. Amazing, right? Amazing to be able to do that. And it's one thing to get someone pregnant. It's another thing to create life, I believe, in the way in which a family construct does it. That's a whole nother conversation for another day, I suppose. But that does. And then, yeah, as my as our kids are going through these moments, right? Yeah. When our when our now 11-year-old, when she was in the second grade, received Holy Communion, now our first grader in the next year will be doing it. For me, I'm I'm just like, don't just let these moments pass. Don't let these moments pass. Um, so I just, you know, I, I have I'm to say, rambling, uh, but I'm, I'm just so I, I got, I'm full of joy about it, I guess. Right. Absolutely. I, I will, I, uh, I, I will tell you when I, um, when I am, um, doing first Holy communion at a, at a church base chapel or at a church, um, I, I try to play a, what I'm doing. And if, if you're half a student, you figure it out. It looks like I'm talking to the first communicants because <laughs> I'm using simpler words. I'm using child-like concepts, and I'm looking at them. But the homily is really directed at their parents. Sure. And I've had more people like yourself who say, in experiencing my children receiving the sacraments, it meant so much to me. So I'm glad it did. And you're one of my target audiences. Good. When, uh, when, well, and, and, I don't and, and, and I've got to remember much of what I sure, say. Sure. I, and, I, and I'll tell you this, this is Catholic. We're having a Catholic heavy conversation. That's what's going to happen yeah. when you have a Catholic host and a Catholic priest. My gratitude for my Protestant friends, for my non-Catholic Christian friends that I've surrounded myself with that can in a moment's notice pull out scripture verses that I just, it's not something I'm good. I'm so grateful for that because that only adds in right yeah. to my faith bucket. So that right be being able to walk alongside them has been absolutely amazing and so I'm just thankful for all that and then and like whether you know if you're listening and and you've got you know young kids like I do I'm 42 years almost 42 years old use it as an opportunity right like our legacy is what we leave behind with them. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I I as a military chaplain I have been blessed. I work alongside so many uh, people of all different faiths. And um, I, my faith has been enriched by my Protestant and Jewish and Muslim brother and sure. sister chaplains that I've uh, been privileged to work with over these yeah. 23 years. The last thing I'll say before we give you a final word before we go, obviously can't wait for you guys to hear from Rob and Dom on tomorrow's show on yeah. Good Friday. I, I will say this, because um, we lean into this on this show as well. You asked about sort of the faith getting deepened and right. My, my uh, progression through it, faith journey. Um, I feel like it has to, I feel like I have to, I feel like men around me have to lean in and be more diligent and faithful because I think the, the, um, the challenges that meet us in today's world have to be combated by strong, faithful, masculine men. Does that mean just strong, faithful, masculine men? Of course not. We need community, right. right? We need community with our wives, with our friends, with our parishioners, right? We need community with all those people. But I do believe that the challenges that face us, strong, faithful, masculine men must be there to face them as well. And if removed from that, I believe, and you're, you're learning a lot about how deep I'm willing to go. I believe that the devil and those demons prowl the earth looking for the ruin of souls. We say it in the prayer to St. Michael, right? Yeah. Send back to hell the devil and his demons, right? That roam the earth looking for the ruin of souls. I think to combat him, we have to have strong, faithful men willing to step into the breach um, that love their God and their families. And when you do that, then the devil is on the run, man. He's, he hates it. He hates it. So that's- Do you, that's do you a, get that's to meet reason. some of your uh, people along the way that, that are uh, devotees of your podcast? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And then are those experiences good when you talk about, Oh, it's amazing. Like when we have a lot of people that I personally know that listen, 
but then we've got a growing audience that I've never met. And so when I get to meet, so I was in South Carolina a few weeks ago, right? We were doing this 22 hour workout, get to hear folks, man, I love what you're doing. Love what you guys are doing. Or I'll, I'll even every now and then I'll just get a random email. I got an email. This isn't a, a religious based commentary, but we did an episode about um, some Vietnam veterans. And I got an email uh, from a gentleman who served in the Navy in Vietnam. And he was like, thank you. Uh, thank you for, thank you for showing us love. I was spit on and yelled at in the airport when we came home. I was called a baby killer when we came home. And so I know why God has us doing what we do here. It's why we lean in so much and we keep going. Um, So it's been an incredible rewarding experience personally, but also we've got stories to tell. And this world of ours isn't as divided as they want us to believe that it is. And there are folks among us who prove that because they go above and beyond through service before self strength, the purpose and community impact. So we charge the Simon of Sirens of the world. That's right. He's he's a picking up the sixth story right there in the Bible. There's show me a better one, right? Yeah. That's exactly what he did in that moment. So that's why we had to tell it. That's why we had to talk about it. Yeah. We wanted to do it for a few years and, uh, Mm -hmm. and, we just had to wait our time to where it was right. And Rob and Dom, having filmed those incredible scenes uh, for this movie, Eucharistic Miracle, um, is going to be amazing. I can't wait for you to see that. Yeah. But you know what? Who better than Father James Hamill to come on and tell us a little <laughs> bit about this guy that we don't know much about? But all maybe, right. Well, understand. Maybe the message is we don't know much about him, but we do because he's all of us. That's right. That's right. He's all of us. He's all of us. Or what we aspire to be. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for doing this. You bet. Thanks. Good talking to you, Brian. You too. He's a colonel of the United States Air Force. He's a priest and he's a dear friend. His name is Father James Hamill. I'm Brian Jodas. That's been this episode of Pick Up the Six Podcast. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. That's from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verse 21. This is episode two of our two-part special, the story of picking up the six through the lens of Simon, a man thrust into an incredible moment in time. Yesterday, we heard from Father James Hamill, and we talked about Simon, who he was, the little that we know about him, and how his act years ago should inspire us still today. Well, today we hear from a pair of high-impact men who now share an incredible bond, after bringing that scene to life in an upcoming film. Rob Renzi and Dom Rosso join the show to talk about acting side by side as Jesus and Simon on this episode of Pick Up the Six Podcast. My brothers, uh, man, I am on fire for this one. Excited to do it and grateful to see and hear from you both. So welcome to Pick Up the Six Podcast. Good to be here, brother. Honored to be here with you guys. You know, we uh, have been tracking, man. You guys, obviously, Rob and I have been friends for almost over probably 25 years at this point. Mm -hmm. Grew up together, went to high school together. His older brother, Ronnie, and I, best of friends. And just have had the blessing of knowing Rob and his family for a long time. Uh, And obviously, have just watched his journey, which includes taking on the role of Jesus Christ in an upcoming film called Eucharistic miracles and we'll get a little bit more into that so that's just the path there dom obviously just have known you and just seen your work for a long time dom's retired navy seal uh incredible american warrior uh and just so just grateful guys to be able to do this we spend time together the three of us with a group of other catholic men and get to just share about the journey that we're on but what we wanted to do over these two days and we started it yesterday with our dear friend father hamill was take some time and lean in on this story. And, you know, we're thinking about as we are here for us as Christians and Catholic Christians in this Lenten journey, these incredibly important days around Easter, what transpires on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, that sets the stage for the Super Bowl of our faith, right? Easter Sunday. And in that, I'm thinking about these moments and just I can't help but think about that moment of picking up the six, which is Simon of Cyrene. And it just so happens that you two men are now bonded for life and having brought that scene physically to life in this upcoming film, Rob playing Jesus, Dom brought in all the way from Virginia to LA to play Simon. And so we're going to just talk about that shared experience today. So Rob, do you mind just, man, piecing together how you guys 
get together on this thing and how you, I mean, cause it's a project in the works, right? You've been working this thing for a long time. Yeah. How does this all kind of give, give us the genesis of this film and then, you know, how, how you guys get connected to make this thing happen. Yeah. Well, the genesis of the film started probably going on almost two and a half years ago. Our producer, Ray, uh, Gria Jalba and our, our director, Angela Labuti, uh, they started it, um, based on Eucharistic miracles that were founded by uh, blessed Carlo Acutis. Um, Ray had been studying it and he has a podcast called the joy of faith on YouTube. Angelo has seen that, saw that podcast was blown away by these miracles. Yeah. And then reached out to him. Angelo had been in the business as a storyboard artist for several years, like 20 years. And he was looking to, to really get into directing and obviously doing a film uh, that he could, you know, give back to God. He was working a lot of secular stuff for a long time. He reached out to Ray. They didn't know each other. He pitched Ray this idea for a movie. And that was the wheel started turning on that. Um, I knew Angelo. I jumped in and, you know, he had asked me to play Christ. And then it was just from there, getting the money, getting the casting and, and, and doing yeah. all that. So, uh, so with that said, my relationship with Dom is um, I actually, you know, I found Dom on, on Instagram in, in a sense, I think, you know, the algorithm there, was showing me a lot of Catholic stuff, obviously what I'm viewing. And I, I came across this page probably three, three years now, Dom, or some, some in that ballpark. Uh, it was before I, we had obviously developed a relationship before the, the, the film. And uh, yeah, I'd seen his page and, you know, I think we all can attest to, you know, wanting to surround ourselves with, you know, masculine Catholic and Christian men who have like the same sort of moral code and uh lit and truly living i could tell you know that he, he was and so i followed him and i think i just started bugging him a lot on you know the dms <laughs> and uh at the time i was actually doing these little videos these little you know my own little short form podcast type mm -hmm. videos uh just trying to be creative and uh, i'll send them to him i'll send them to him and then i think i finally got a follow back and then we just started developing relationship and he loved them he's like he's incredible and then fast forward, you know, we got in a small group briefly with some some top notch Catholic guys: Andy from Carry the Cross, Jordan mm -hmm. from Do the Harder Thing, Pierce from uh, Catholic Guardians. We started our own little group through messaging and stuff like that, and just sort of built from there. And then, you know, me and Dom, you know, just started to remain friends and, and and everything like that. And uh, so fast forward, uh, you know, this movie. Uh, had its challenges uh it seemed yeah. like every scene as we were we were approaching every scene and that's movie making in general but obviously a, a catholic film on the eucharist you're gonna get some attacks and uh man we were getting ready to shoot obviously the um scourging carrying the cross crucifixion scene over two days we had a simon we had a simon drop out the guy we thought was gonna couldn't do it i, th I think this is a week out yeah about, it's pretty close right and yeah. yeah and i was with angelo and we were i remember we were specifically at this uh prop place in, in california and, and we were just talking looking getting props and and doing all the uh pre-production stuff and i and i was like you know i got a, a buddy of mine you know and dom had a beard just like that you know yeah. um yeah, he'd be a out, perfect go, fit he has a he'd good be a perfect fit I go, he has a good look to him. Um, I don't know how much acting experience he has, I think, but he's been on sets and he has an intensity to him that I think will fit, you know, for this. And I showed Angelo the pictures and immediately, bro, bro. Got to go, got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called him right then and there. I called him right then and there in the prop place. Or I texted him or something. Yeah. And he, you hit me right back or we've got on the horn and Dom goes, brother, I'm going to pray on it. I'll call, I'll be, I'll call you right back. It's okay. And I think literally you got with your family and, and prayed on it. And then, yep. and then from there, he's like, I'm in. And so was super cool. Basically the first time we ever met in person was, was under the that. cross. Yes. Yeah. It was under the cross. It's incredible. You know, shout out to our friends that carry the cross. We're both rocking yeah. carry the cross bills yeah. today. Had to yeah. on yep. this day. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's that, it's that leap of faith, right? It's just being open to those moments and, and building real relationship. And, you know, look, the internet brings us a lot of temptations and a lot of things in life that we don't need, but gentlemen, I've found that it can, it can bring some real relationship here, which is spurred to this Dom as, as this request comes in, right. And you're, you're a faithful guy. You wear that on your sleeve. You're not scared to put on the armor and show it for everybody to see. And I think you do that as a way to 
to show men, masculine men, it's it's okay to lean into the faith component here. I'm going to ask you a little bit about that later as we wrap. But when Rob makes that call, man, and says, listen, I need you. Can you come play this guy? Can you get out to LA? You know, what were you thinking? How did that, how did that go down? Well, first of all, I'm feeling a little left out because I don't have a carry the cross hat. <laughs> I feel like this would have been the perfect uh, meeting to do that. But, you know, when Rob called me and I literally did just that, you know, trying to take things to prayer as much as possible, you know, Rob, which is a man that I respect, I love, you know, the things that he's putting out, uh, just the beauty that's coming from his heart, you know, really hit me. And, and of course, the Eucharist itself is something that's been growing in my life of understanding what it truly is. Mm. So this whole journey to the altar, to this this beautiful sacrifice that has been uh, misunderstood and, and not understood in so many different ways, not only by myself, but our culture, there's been this kind of growing. And when I first saw the Eucharistic Miracles movie, I actually didn't even know Rob was involved. I had no clue. I did not have a single yeah. idea you guys were even connected. I was like, that is going to be something that's going to change the world. As soon as I saw it, I was like, it can't not. When you speak the truth, the truth is set on fire and there's nothing that's going to stop that film. It's going to save people. It's going to bring people to Christ. It's going to save souls. I know that with all my heart. So that was the instinct that I had. Mm. So then watching the connection over the, the months as it progressed and then seeing Rob, I'm like, well, of course Rob's involved. You know, this is, uh, this is going to change the world. So when I got that phone call, and it was probably just like everything else in our lives at the most inconvenient time possible with uh, all kinds of stuff going on in my life and changes and, and uh, you know, shifts in, in what I'm doing with my family. I literally looked at the phone and I was like, babe, I, was like, I got to pray. I walked her in the bedroom. As soon as I got off the phone, I got down on my knees and I was like, Lord, what are you asking me to do here? You know, I was like, what, what are you asking me to do? And I just had this this voice and this feeling and, and, you know, my wife telling me, I was like, we can't, I can't say no to this. This isn't mm. like, no, wasn't even something that came into my mind. It was just, how do I make it work? And I was like, I have to do this. I was like, I can't say no. Just as Christ asked and made th that stories for us, that story had to be yeah. written. Yeah. That stories for every single man in the world, just like every other piece of scripture. But this specifically, what we're talking about today it was for our lives. It's for our heart. And so when I, when I had Rob, which was playing Jesus, ask me to help carry the cross, how do you say no to that? That's right. Uh, That's right. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty literal, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So to do anything else would have been uh, just an odd, it would have put a hole in my heart for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so I had to say yes. And I, I called Rob back. I said, I'm in. I was like, I don't know how I'm getting there, what I'm doing, what, <laughs> what's going on, but I'm going to make it work and I'm going to adapt just like I always do and I'm going to figure it out. And uh, there was a fire inside of me that said, I have to do this. And that became my number one priority, knowing how awesome it was going to be. And then to see it in hindsight, I mean, it's still mind blowing. Like yeah. I can't even yeah. fully put in the words exactly uh, the beauty that came from this. So that was kind of the spark of it in that phone call. And, uh, you know, here we are today, just after some amazing growth, brotherhood, mm. accountability, and all the things that we know we need, uh, Rob and I have shared, and, and we know we're just getting started on that. So it's yeah. been awesome. The trailer for that film is on this show page. We'll share it in the show notes. Watch the entire trailer, but then lean in at the one minute and 50 second mark, and you will see these two. You'll get a little sneak peek of what it's going to look like, the intensity on your face yeah. is, is incredible. We'll get, we'll get to that in a moment, Rob, at this point, right. When Dom's coming in, you guys are getting ready to film what are critical moments. And just to really set the stage, essentially what you, you're doing for this film is you're recreating these live action moments that then pair with this movie that tracks with these Eucharistic miracles. Very quickly, Eucharistic miracle are the times in life in which that Eucharist, that bread, that host, that wine has proven, right to miraculously transform and actually bleed and have human cells. That has happened over time, right? And that's well charted. And this movie is going to document that. But what you guys mm -hmm. were tasked with as this film crew is to reenact a lot of these moments. So you've got Peter and you've got John, and you've got other disciples and you're walking on water and you're breaking bread at the last supper. And inevitably you are to be stripped, beaten, crucified, and killed 
in the film, right? Mm -hmm. So you bring a lot of folks in to bring together what's a pretty big effort to film those incredibly powerful scenes. Your brothers are a part of it, right? Yeah. Ricky comes in, Ronnie comes in, those guys play Roman soldiers, born to play Roman centurions, those yeah. guys, right? Like, yeah. Perfect yeah. fit. Yeah. Right? yeah. So where are you guys mm -hmm. at in filming all this and set the stage for Dom comes in and then we've got to now film these incredibly powerful scenes. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you nailed it there with a lot. We, so we, we had, once we got going, we had started in October of last year. Yeah. 20, 2021. And we were sort of hitting, we had started in October uh, with one of the scenes and we were right in the November last supper, hit another walking on water scene and in November, early December. And so this was like, we, I mean, it was weekend after weekend, maybe a weekend off here of just pushing. And we were yeah. pushing. And like I said, it's like, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. Um, there's a lot going on. Mo you know, we have a, a small, it was a small budget film. Yeah. And, and listen, this um, footage and filming these scenes is critical to help raise some money to help finish this thing off. You need to show yeah. people what this looks like. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we needed to get the live action going. We had filmed sort of the, 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 the investigation portion of it where Ray investigates these Eucharistic miracles and, mm -hmm. and he speaks with the scientists and the doctors and, uh, and, and priests and theologians who have all, you know, who, who've studied these um, miracles. And so this was the, the live action that inter interweaves with all that. And like I said, we were flowing pretty hard and we were, we were long days and, and like, we were all, you know, we're a bunch of scrappy fighters and we were like, we, let's get There's it done. Into, yeah. Every problem that you could think of what's happening, was happening. We were just finding our way through it, finding a way through it. So, and for me, I can say like, obviously the role of Christ has been the honor of my life. It's been a grace. That changed I, your life. It, changed it. It changed, my, changed it. Um, I, and, and so obviously every role, every time I step into his, his sandals, you know, uh, has been, I take it, I take it very seriously and I, I'm devoted to it, but there's something I think about the, the passion, right? There, yeah. I think there's something about the yeah. passion that I know I, I've had a devotion to, um, the passion of the Christ and, and, and the suffering that he went through that was just like in the back of my head, I'd say waiting on it. And so here, here it came and leading up to it. And, um, I think having Dom come out was, um, it was a relief. It was mm. a relief to me because I knew like we hadn't met, met physically or personally, but I knew that I had somebody that was going to suffer with me basically yeah. the best way I could say it. Um, you know, I, as an actor, I was trying my best to allow myself physically to, to feel some pain um, leading up to this. And I'd been fasting. I dropped about 30 pounds and uh, all those little things, you know, a pinprick, a pinprick of what obviously the Christ yeah. went through. No, nothing, uh, you know, but yeah, you have to a little bit. And and so here we were, at, you know, leading up to it two long days of shooting that I knew were, were going to be, you know, pretty brutal. I had my brothers in town and, and Dom showed up and it was everything that, that we yeah. thought he was ready to go. He was, he was focused. Uh, he, he helped out a lot on, on, on some of the production crew uh, aspects of it. And um, yeah, we, we, it was just one of those things he, where, where what's interesting is because I was, I remember we shot the crucifixion twice. So we, this was the first time we ended up having to reshoot it a few months later, but I remember Dom was looking at me like, you fat, you fasting today. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It was just I am like, too. Me I too. am too. Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. Uh, and Don, what kind like, of, uh, what kind of, yeah. um, me getting like any acting coach here? Like, you know, what are they telling you <laughs> to get you prepared for this? It seems like you're pretty dialed in. Like you got a sense as to what you got to do here. You know, this role, because I mean, you know, look, we've, we've seen it. We, we've studied it. We've been to multiple stations of the cross. We know about this moment. But to drop into it, what's the mindset, right? What's the, what's the guidance dropping into a moment like this? I think it's the scripture, you know, don't worry about what you're going to say. You'll, you'll have the right words when the time comes. And it's just trusting God with every bit of that. And that's exactly what I did. And I mean, more and more we're called to, right, in every aspect of our lives. But um, where, where else should I be trusting God more in a moment where I get to, you know, honor the passion in, in, a, in a micro spot in a micro moment i get to do that with rob and uh all these beautiful people on set you know so for me it just wasn't something that bothered me i was just ready for it you know and obviously god prepares us for everything that we're getting ready to go through and 
I knew that it was exactly where I needed to be. I was at the perfect place. And I, I was on fire. When I tell you, when I got on that set, when I saw Rob, like there, I was just, my heart was in the game. You know, the spirit was working through me. I just, I felt everything, the people that I was meeting, the conversations we were having about, you know, we were talking about God the whole time. Yeah. So like when you, when you're learning from each other and you're watching each other and you see these these other amazing people that are showing up with that, with that spirit in them, it just changes you, you know? And uh, that's why I just didn't worry about it. I was with these amazing professionals that, you know, not only from a professional standpoint, but also a spiritual standpoint, you put those two together and it just, uh, that's it. I just wasn't. Yeah. What did, what did you think? Mine did hit you. Like when you saw, you see Rob sort of, I mean, he's in, like when he's in costume, right? The hair, all the stuff. I mean, at, at, at one point, I mean, they have you outfitted with really what we can only depict is about as realistic as it would have been from the sh- the shroud of Torin, right? I mean, you look at most crucifixes, he's got a spear in the side and some busted up knees and crowned, and that's about it. But really, it would have been absolutely brutal. Passion of the Christ style, which I think depicts it about as as brutal as it's going to get Rob, dom when you we, see Rob, right rob tell us tell we, us what, we what actually, the setup looks we like we actually did the wound our wounds were f- we pulled that from the shroud wow so we w- looked at the shroud angela our director we got a great prosthetics guy peter murphy who mm-hmm. came on fantastic good good catholic guy too and he looked at the shroud and so every wound we try to mimic from the wow. shroud so that was that's where we got it from yeah dom when you see that right <laughs> come into reality just what what's your what's your mind heart thinking well i I don't know if i should lead up to it or or reverse you know the story but the the summit of of this moment of understanding this and how real it feels and what we're doing there and why we're there you know we're in a mass and and that was one of the other beautiful things about this we did multiple masses throughout Mm, yeah right and rob and i are are in mass you know, the most beautiful place we could possibly be on this earth. And he is just done up with everything that they just did. And not only that, we're in front of the Shroud of Turin that's in front of us in, in this. Uh, uh, the chapel on the property. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm getting ready to receive the Eucharist and, and I'm in tears. I mean, you're, yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, what is happening right now? Like the Lord has put me right here. And how blessed are all of us to be a part of this moment. And, you know, we're called to imitate Christ in every single bit of what we can understand scripturally. And when it comes to the passion and what that led up to, you know, in mass, what do we say? You know, through your through your cross and resurrection, you set us free. Yeah, You set us free. That's real freedom. The walk to that cross and Christ's resurrection is everything of understanding our freedom as men. And to be there in that very moment of understanding the suffering that Christ went through, and even to get a glimpse in a kind of another layer of that, it does something to you. There's no coming back from that once you mm. understand it. And uh, to be there with Rob and, and seeing the intensity and realism every, of everything, it just gives you the visual. It gives you another layer uh, to know, like, this is real. This is not something that was made up. This is, this is my life. This is what we're called to. Um, and that was just the summit of that right there, being on Rob on my knees, just being like, what's happening right now, you know? Yeah. You're yeah. not You're not just, here's what I'm hearing from you guys. You're not just acting and going through the movement and the motions. You are physically, mentally, and most importantly, spiritually connected to this in a way yeah. that honestly is probably hard to describe. If you haven't, right, you guys have been through it. And even Ronnie calls me afterwards. He's like, I can't even explain to you what this is like and how dialed in these guys were yeah. doing this. Rob, talk me yeah. through, talk me through the scene, <laughs> right? How's the scene layout? So, yeah, man, I, it's interesting. So we'd filmed the, the scourging the day before. And so um, the second day we, we showed up and this was the day, you know, it was on, Don was on. And so, we do a few of this, a few of the takes and a few of the scenes where I'm still carrying it myself. I'm obviously heavily wounded at this point, uh, you know, suffering tremendously. Who Christ is, um, and so just to just to caveat, um, the cross we used was probably about 350 pounds. This wasn't hollowed out, right. hollowed out. So real you know, which 
some crosses were, you know, on some sets. This was, you know, um, two railroad tires that that we connected, and it was every ounce of as heavy as you could be, which is the way I think we we we, we prefer. That's the way you guys would want wanted it. Yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And so this was a scene. We just uh, we were set up. I'd been doing some takes, and Dom was. You could see Dom getting himself to a place. You, you know, I think the hardest probably part of his character was, you know. Uh, which I'm, I'll have to go back and, and listen to Father, but I'm sure he mentions is uh, Simon. He didn't have pity on Christ. <laughs> you know, yeah. he didn't want to carry it. Yeah, there's yeah. some. There's some. Yeah. There's like. There's a few. I did a little reading too, right? There's a few that's a maybe because he's a disciple. The right, but odds are, it's like no, I don't want any part of this. Like I, what? I'm just yeah. I'm passing through. Well, he, was from, he was from. He was from. He was from Cyrene, so he wasn't. Right. You know, he wasn't a Jew. He was a Gentile. Right. And so um, he had come in and, 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 and you know, the way we shot it was uh, he was very much like, no, this was a this was a condemned man. Yeah, good. Well, let him go. You know, going to crucifixion. I, yeah. I, yeah, let him go. Like, I'm just trying to pass through with my kids. I want no part of that. Right. So that might, I think for Dom, you know, as someone who like, no, Lord, but like, put it on me. He's developed his faith to a point where he's mm -hmm. he's willing to, to to bear his cross now. And it's like that's probably one of the, hard, the hardest parts. Is oh yeah, is you're like going to sprint out there and grab it from him, right? It's like you can't, you know, you know, you have to deny him at, at first, and he's sort of forced into it by the soldiers. Um, mm -hmm. but it was like leading up to it, we didn't we had talked a little bit, but we didn't say much. You know, I didn't. It was sort of like a look. You know, I was sort of in it too, and I could see him preparing and, and, and preparing himself mm. and angelo gave us our notes and then and, 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 you know it was action and and then you know i fall and yeah they push him and grab him and, and the crowd and everything like that and he played it really really well and and then after that yeah it was just um one of those moments you know at that point dom's now bearing the weight of the cross and i'm on dom so he's carrying the cross in my weight in these scenes Yep. And I just remember a few times when we were, when we were during action and I'm, you know, obviously suffering uh, my character and, and, and trying to find it and get there, just looking over at him and just seeing that he was there, you know, there looking at it. And we just would share some moments. And if you look at that trailer, you'll see it in one of them. Yeah. So one of my favorite moments is, you know, the, I, I, I purposely almost, put my head towards him right yep. to, to, yep. to 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 comfort me in those moments yep. is what christ yep. wanted um you've got your arm around just, him i almost uh, even see in the trailer like a little yeah. tap like a little tap like a yeah and and um when you see dom's eyes i, I think it says everything i think every actor will tell you it was yeah. there he, yeah. he was he was becoming transformed and um uh yeah and you know i think also it's important to note that Ronnie and Ricky were hitting us for real. We were putting for real. Them in shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. You guys really, I mean, you really put it together in a way in which you wanted some, you wanted it to feel real and, and raw and like that. The day, the yeah. day, the day a Navy SEAL helps Christ well, his cross is pretty incredible. I'll, I'll say something kind of funny real quick and uh, um, that I think people will enjoy. And, and Dom, I know he'll, he'll and especially this, our but, especially our audience too yeah because he is a seal and he's so he's so darn tough so we start <laughs> mistake i think and he's you know i get thrown down they grab him they go help him carry it i cut and then we set up with him you know starting to carry and ronnie and ricky are whipping him or ricky's i mean whipping him, not holding him back and dom is just <laughs> it, you know we go through and then like angela's like cut 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 Beautiful, beautiful. He's like, nah, listen, stop. <laughs> um, this is supposed to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, so act you like know? it hurts. Yeah, yeah, act like <laughs> you're not supposed to because he's so tough and the seals in him and right. this light and, right. and you want to, you want to take it for Christ, but it's like sure. remember, you're Simon, you're not the right. Navy SEAL. You're it's the Serenian who's hurt. just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was but you get moments like it because it's so much it's so much weight to this and it's yeah. it's so uh, it's a lot going on that there were these little moments during very serious stuff where you get a little, little le levity sure. and you sure. needed it. it you needed beautiful. It. Yeah. it put, and then it puts you back right to where you need to be. And we kept going, but I, I, we talked about that, that time it was, it was just beautiful. It was funny, you know? And then after that, he, he started. So, 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 
So the Renzi yeah, brothers slowly. got a few in on you, Rosso. Is yeah, what you're me. yeah, yeah. Well, with guys with vowels at the end of our names, it's okay. Yeah, right? exactly. It's okay, to, it's okay to do that. Dom, listen, man, you've performed uh, at the highest level on behalf of our nation, right? Been asked to do things that a lot of Americans wouldn't be asked to do, and we're grateful, internally grateful for that and your ability to do that. There, there's some kind of similarities, I, I, I would assume, to the to dropping in in a special operator mode and sort of dropping in and performing this were, were you leaning in on any of that experience right past experience in the military to kind of get ready for this thing yeah for sure i mean it, especially the 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 physical aspect definitely because like rob said this this was no joke i mean it wasn't and we we did want it that way because we're going in to to tell the story the best story the most beautiful story ever told and without suffering, it wouldn't even feel right, you know? Yeah. And so <clears throat> I think mentally, yeah, of course, I always talk about mindset. I always talk about improving the way we're thinking about things, the way we approach things. But this story of conversion in that short moment, and, and like you just brought up that there's so little talked about, Simon, you know, sometimes when, when you said that out loud, and often when I've reflected on this, it reminded me of Joseph a little bit, mm. you know, where... There's not much written about this, this humble, quiet man that just follows the will of God. And Rob's hit the nail on the head when he said, the most difficult part of this is you rejecting, in a sense, Christ at the moment where they're yeah. asking to carry the cross. And at first, that's exactly the reaction that I had. I'm like, man, I don't like, how am I going to convey this with authentic authenticity to be able to say, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't want any part of that because every part of me, every part of me wants to die for Christ. But I think the important part of that conversion is the same exact conversion that we have as men. And I'm speaking for myself because how many times did I deny Christ not wanting to get under my own crosses? Still to this day, the difficulty that we have not wanting to get out on our own crosses and we are reluctant. We think we're all gun ho, but yet when it comes down down to it, in front of the world, in front of an audience, in front of everything that's going on in front of us that the world wants us to be, we reject and we deny and we don't want to be a part of it. And that was a beautiful thing for me to recognize, not only in Simon, because it did change my life. I would say Simon and, and Joseph, 100% of the two men in the Bible that really, really forged my heart to, mm -hmm. to true conviction and about how we do do that. Um, but getting in that moment and suffering with Rob and feeling the weight of that cross, um, and knowing, like we said, it was like a pinprick. It was like a little piece of sand on the world compared to what actually happened. But just to get to experience that, uh, it created a, a humility in me that I've never had before. Mm. I got to see things from a different angle, you know, and while everything else prepared me for it, there's really nothing else like it, you know, and, and that's why. A lot of tough guys out there that that think, oh, well, you did that. So you were a team guy and, and you were a SEAL. So you can do that like anybody else. And, and now that my faith has increased by the grace of God, I start to realize that this is more impactful. Our faith and the disciplines in our faith prepare you for more than I was ever exposed to in the military, as a SEAL, as a mm -hmm. man. Um, and a lot of what I've done through the church and through the sacraments it doesn't compare. And I've talked about that a lot. It doesn't compare to what I went through. So I believe that our faith prepares you more for what I did than, than what, you know, I did in the military. So, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, an amazing parallel. And obviously the three of us, right. St. Joseph just, I mean, <laughs> you know, the epitome of sort of male role model, silent, silent, but active, silent, but active. And I, you know, I, I often say like, if you could go back in one time and meet you know, three people, whatever one, he might be number one on the list. I mean, to go back in time, right. And meet that guy. I just, man, I would love to drop in. I'd love to drop in when Jesus is like eight or nine. Yeah. He's raising him. I just, man, I would love yeah. to, as a father, right. I just love to yeah. drop in and see that. But to think about the parallel between him and then obviously Simon later, I also wonder, do you guys, and cause I think about this, just hearing you talk. And I wonder if you've thought about it. What does Simon do after this? Like, you know, does he think much of it? Does it have an impact on him? Right? Does he carry it with him later? It, eventually, if all the disciples are killed, except for John the Beloved later, right? He's the only one that dies of old age, I think. 
Rob, you can check me on that. Yep. That means Alexander and Rufus go too, right? Yeah. It's interesting yeah. when you think about that stuff, right, Rob? Yeah. Because we know that we know, you know, through scripture, obviously you get we get we get we get what we get out of the scripture in the story, but we have sacred tradition, obviously, as, as Catholics too. We have um we we pulled a lot, I think, as Gibson did in the passion from um Blessed Anne uh Emmerich, uh the the Dolores Passion. And in there there's a lot of information mm. on on Simon as well. And we do know that he's transformed by the time they got to Calvary at, at, the, at the top, that he's a different man. It didn't take Jesus long. Once you <laughs> accept the cross right. and follow him, it doesn't take him long to transform you. And I think that's really the story here. And that's why I think we're all, we're all talking about it. Mm-hmm. Here's a cross that we don't want. Here's an inconvenient cross. And it, it bears the most fruit when we accept it. And the physical act of carrying it spiritually changed. Simon, yeah, you know, and uh, and that was a beautiful parallel. What just sort of wrapping uh, full circle with Tom is, I said, yeah, maybe one of the hardest parts for him were, was the denial. But I tell you this, you should have watched when we got to the top of Calvary. Wait till you see that scene when he can't let go, when he can't turn away, when he, when when now all you want is to die for him, and just that short little cross. I'll tell you this, get ready for that scene. Because he knew what he was doing there, mm. you know, and it was beautiful to watch. And we had to put Ricky and Ronnie on him for that scene. Cause <laughs> Ron, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie, said, I said, how was it? He goes, I had to put hands on him. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, you know, God bless all the other Roman soldiers. But when we were like, okay, I remember looking at Dom. I think I was, I was pretty much wrapped at this point. We had done the scenes. And so we're like, okay, we're going to transfer the cross up. And there's this huge hill to transfer it up. And everyone, everyone, you guys have. I mean, the set is the setting is incredible. Where you filmed, and I've been I've been fortunate enough to see some behind the scenes stuff that you've sent me. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Looks that's a real. I mean, that's a real testament to Angelo. Real testament. He mm. he outdid himself on set design, location scouting. He, pour, he pours his heart. Uh, and soul uh, into uh, uh, unbelievable. So we found a really great place in um, the Santiago Retreat Center down in Silverado, California. But um, and gorgeous. But um. I remember, you know, I had wrapped, we'd done all the scenes with me and, and Dom and we're like, okay, now we got to, we got to film him, you know, not wanting to leave, you know, Christ. And, and we were talking about it. I was looking at Dom. I was like, I go, yeah, just imagine, you know, imagine if you were here, you were here with Christ and it was actually you they picked and now they want you to leave. Like, how would you, and I'll never forget. He just looked right up, right up at me. He goes, I'll have to kill me. And he put his head down. He's like, yeah. I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to kill me. That's it. And we were like, well, we, okay, let's get action. He, he's ready, you know? And then we go to transfer the cross and he goes, uh-uh. And uh, Dom was like, I, I need to let me carry it, you know? And he put it, he, he carried it up the, the rest of the hill, this steep hill. He felt some pain. He had to feel that suffering a little bit. We set up. Ron and Ricky were ready in action. And it ended up being really beautiful to watch, touching and uh, I think we did it in one take, Dom. Yeah, that scene. You know, it's, it's and, and so uh, it was beautiful, man. Yeah. He, from he, your, yeah. Dom, from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, when I think about being under the cross, you know, and, and you obviously we prayed on Simon's conversion and what happened there and really trying to visualize what did he go through, everything that he felt, the emotion uh, in a short period of time through Calvary of, of the reluctancy and, and being like, Oh my goodness, this is, this could be the end for me. I'm getting wrapped up into this thing that I had nothing to do with. And then sharing and touching the blood of Christ and walking with Christ and bearing the weight that he bared. And it, and in his last and final moments when he was crippled as a man in his physical form, you know, you're coming in there to, to bear that weight for him. Right. And so I'm getting goosebumps right now because like this whole journey through those steps, every step, Simon is just changing his heart and realizing what he's been missing and realizing who he is now and realizing where he's been called and everything is making sense. And uh, I felt every bit of that. And, and you know, 
of course, I have the the seal and tactical part of me that's that's calculating how I could just take every single person out under the cross. <laughs> and I'm I mean, like, if I had to do it now, I would take that guy's sword, lob that guy's leg off, and and just right. take it around. But I also am bringing the time into this and being like, you know, he he wasn't a warrior. He was a guy that just got pulled into this thing. This wasn't his profession. He was with his children. And in a sense, just becoming this passionate brawler at the end, being like, now you're not going to pull me away. Mm. Now I know my calling. I was confused. I was lost. Mm. But I just shared with, Cro- with Christ under the cross. And now I know who I am. And I bear that weight. And now you're going to have to kill me to take me out of here. And uh, as soon as that scene ends in the Bible, we don't hear anything else. That's you it. Know, we, don't, we don't get to understand where else he went. But God gave us just enough to know. Just enough to know. It doesn't take many words in the Bible to know that he was a changed man from going, Mm -hmm. not wanting to do it, from doing it. And uh, I just tried to put myself in that mode. And and it wasn't hard to do because of how amazing and how just connected uh, I was in that moment with Rob, you know, looking over at Rob. I mean, they're whipping, they're whipping us. I mean, it's not like Rob said, it was all very real. I mean, there was some that was like, it it put me in fight mode. Yeah, Yeah. I bet. (laughs) Not to get yeah. out of this. Yeah. And so at the end there, I truly did feel like I didn't want to leave that mountain. I didn't mm. want to leave that top of, of where it was. You know, Rob was on the ground, you know, just beaten down. Everybody's over him, kicking him, you know, kicking sand in his face, uh, still whipping him. And then and then we got separated. It was uh it was like this pull, you know what I mean? That I didn't even want to happen. But right. here we are at the cross. Now Christ is getting pulled this way, and I'm mm-hmm. getting pulled this way. And uh, it was this kind of like dark separation of, I know this is inevitable, uh, but this is this is part of what needs to happen. And I just had to do everything I could not to, you know, make it real. You know, I had to like play the game and and kind of let go a little bit of uh, what was actually happening to not, you know, to get too caught up. But um, yeah, it, it was a true conversion mm-hmm. as well as the conversion of Simon. And, you know, it was just a beautiful, you couldn't have, been in a different spot. I mean, we were up there at sunset, you know, with everything going on and, and uh, literally at the top of the mountain where, yeah. where I you know, you got the other two other crosses in the ground yeah. and you're staring at this big gap of where we're getting ready to yeah. walk. And I'm being pulled away from knowing that that's it. That's the end of my scene. And, and Simon as well, he, that's it. He's o- it's over. So his life changing after that, you know, you hear stories about his son, potentially there's another uh, Alexander later, which they can only really connect it with him becoming a bishop, I believe, uh, after the fact. And so, you know, it makes sense that that would be the case, that he made such an impact that his children and everybody else converted with him because he wow. knew. Yeah. So, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that's a great point. Guys, mm-hmm. just what an absolute gift and a blessing to be able to do this with you on today of all days, right? This Good Friday, as yeah. we really, you know, go into this just powerful weekend. It, it, you know, um, Easter has changed for me in a big, big way over the last four or five years, really, it's always been important, right? Raised Catholic, never, never let feel. I was, you know, I was talking to my dad about this the other day. We have a lot of conversations. I just, I was actually just texting him. I said, I just, I'm so grateful for you and mom for just setting the example. I felt like I never left. I'm just, I'm I'm very good. And that's not the same for everybody. It's just my perspective. I was just thanking him. But then I think about just being around guys like you and just growing and maturing in the faith and just, boy, man, the last four or five Easter and Lent's I've just, yeah. we got to pour it in and just to hear your story, the way that you guys poured it in on that day. And, and it's not lost to me. And this is how God works. Our audience knows this. We have talked about many God moments here. We don't talk faith at this level on every episode. I'm so grateful to do it. It's not lost on me that you had somebody lined up to play this that fell through and you had to call on somebody. I mean, it, it's just the 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 parallels, man. Yeah. You can't make this stuff up, Rob. It's just it is no. it, it's as he would have orchestrated that. That there's no coincidence. It's when God no, takes I, action and chooses to remain anonymous about the results. In this one, he's letting us know it was him. But I mean, yeah, I call him, I call him wink, winks and nudges. I, mm-hmm. On this film, I, keep, I I I've been like, we get a lot of winks and nudges from him, and and that's yeah. that you know those God moments that you just know it's not coincidence or this and that you're like okay he's he's still working he's in control 
All right, great. He's still blessing this film, you know. So that was one of those moments with Dom and and, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. We still need some help, though. So before we go, gents, Rob, right. can you just where are we at? Our listeners are going to feel moved after this. And after these last two days, right? Father Hamlin yeah. yesterday, incredibly so grateful for him to sort of mm -hmm. really give us some biblical sense, right? And unpack a little bit. These guys sharing their shared experience. Where are we at with the film? Give give us the, what I call the data dump, right? Where can people get more info? What can they do to help you in the process? Yeah, our, our website is uh, Eucharistic Miracles, so plural, Eucharistic Miracles Movie.com. Uh, if you go there, you can you can see all, all the behind the scenes and what we're working on. There's a lot of info there. We finished the, the live action. Um, and so we need money for post production. You know, we this this film is just gonna be so epic. Again, we're going into the Eucharist, we're going to transubstantiation, we're gonna show it in a 3D animation style. What happens at the mass? You know, yeah, incredible. And, and, and yeah, and so we we filmed the blue screen. Anyway, editing's it's a lot of money, right? And you in a movie can be made or made or broken in, in the editing room. So uh, we need to raise some money for that. Uh, and, and we will, we're confident, you know, God won't be outdone. And so there you can check it out if you want to help or donate um, at, at that website. You can on, on Instagram, Eucharistic Miracles movie too. And the movie actually, it, it will be called the new manna. Um, mm -hmm. That's our, that's our, that's our title uh, for when we release it. So if you, you go on YouTube too, you, you said you posted the, the link in the, in yep. the, in the, so that's good. But if you go, you type in the new mana trailer or anything on YouTube, you'll, you'll find a bunch of stuff there too. Awesome. Gentlemen, I love you both. I'm so grateful yeah. for your dedication to do this together. I wish you nothing but a great Easter weekend here. And uh, man, I've just been, it's, it's a good one. I'm almost a little yeah. lost at the end here. That's rare for me to kind of be that way. <laughs> Well, Dice, I'm uh, grateful for letting us jump on here and speaking about this, man. It's been a, it's been something that uh, obviously we'll never forget. And you know, like anything, when you when you suffer with somebody, it unites you to mm. to uh, you know to another level. And I, you know, and I'm I'm just grateful for Dom and uh, for coming out and bearing that cross with me. It was an unforgettable, unforgettable moment. Awesome, man. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, Dom. What do you think, man? Wrap it up for us. I appreciate both of you guys so much. And, you know, you said it, you know, that it's changed. And I think in the hearts of men, especially with how we're leading our children, mm -hmm. you know, we have to make this season different. It's the most important time of the year for us. And out of all the things that the world tries to teach us and tell us and all the secular stuff that's going on, no matter who you are listening to this, I encourage you guys to dig deep. This is our season to train. This is our season to forge. This is our season to understand what God's truly calling you to do, to form our will to his. And if we don't do it now more than all year, when will you? Mm. God bless mm. you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless. I love it. Guys, beautiful. Have a great good Friday. Have just a powerful and uh, yeah. meaningful Easter. And I just greatly appreciate it, gents. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you got you. it. That's Dom Rosso and Rob Renzi. I'm Brian Jodis. That's been this episode of Pick Up a Six Podcast. <laughs>